Naomi knows the aankondiging was... Who do you call if you want to establish this? How do you do that? Where do you start? That's what millions of people asked when we saw multi-agent system build their whole marketing campaign on national Dutch television. Meet Shurd, my business partner and the mystery man behind this viral TV moment. His AI team analyzed the whole book, created social media hooks, designed visuals and created the whole PowerPoint presentation, all while chatting in a Discord like real employees. No to think? I sit to think. The reaction was insane and Shurd told me this. People using my work to promote themselves to me someone was like hey do you want an AI marketing agency like you saw on TV everyone wanted a copy of the system and in our community they held workshops and broke it down step by step what it is and how it works and this is the result of just a bunch of different models talking to each other today we sat down with short to talk how he built it why businesses are rushing to implement multi-agent systems and when should we do so and the moments that made the tv audience gasp could you talk about the use case the whole process and of course your experience sitting in the audience and seeing it happen yeah so i built a marketing agency inside of nadn there was a campaign leader that got an assignment i want you to build a marketing campaign for a certain book the leader would talk with different AIs in its team that would then just work together to build a whole marketing campaign. So they would go through the book and figure out what's the target audience, catchy hooks for social media promotion, a copywriter who makes sure that everything is in line with the expected, like the tone of the author of the book, all the kind of stuff and all just different AI agents working together to figure out, okay, how can we put together a nice marketing campaign and in the end there was also a designer who could use image generation to build actual visuals for the campaign as the very last step it would all be built into one single powerpoint presentation that included the visuals as well and one really awesome part of the demo is that you could see all of the agents talk to each other in discord you could see that the campaign leader tagged the book expert to ask questions and then go to the next agent to go, oh, I learned this about the book. And you could see everything that was going on. Each agent would give small updates in between, and you could just follow the whole process, see exactly how they got to the end result. And this is the very important part of agentic workflows, because you have to have a transparency, especially when you are evaluating systems, you have to have certain metrics. For example, if something doesn't go well, you have to have ability to detect where and what happened. So this is orchestration system where you have a hierarchy, the main manager and workers under. The other aspect of multi-agent systems is human in a loop. And I know that you incorporated that very um, intelligently. What I built, and this wasn't in the... Uh... It was functionally there, but it wasn't used in the demo that was shown. But what also worked is that if the campaign leader would give an assignment to a different agent, you would see that in Discord, but you could also just message yourself. And as soon as the book expert was done, it would pick up the message to share and give feedback to the orchestrator, to the main agent orchestrating the process. So that way you could intermittently give feedback. Hey, maybe you should consider this or you should consider that. And it would pick it up and take action based on that. So that's a way you could, in the process, steer it in the direction you'd like. Or if you think this is a bad idea, throw it into the chat. It would get picked up by the orchestrator and it would steer into the direction you wanted. I can't imagine how it is to sit in a studio and see everything live. You saw the audience reaction. I'm very curious what happened afterwards. How do everyday people who watch TV did you hear any feedback what happened afterwards? I got a lot of messages and responses afterwards, and it was fun to of see. Of course. The example really spoke to a larger audience that wasn't just people who are into AI. That was the most interesting thing. People were like kind of baffled. Wow, is this already possible? And it really spoke to the imagination because you could see those models mm. interact as if they were a real team of people building something together. That just blew people's minds. Any, any particular examples? Oh yeah. So people using my work to promote themselves to me. Someone was like, Hey, do you want an AI marketing agency? Like you saw on TV, message me and I'll be sharing tips and tools on how to build them yourself. And oh my God. 
So it really had like a massive reach and that was baffling to me. And then also kind of people who were into AI were using it as an example, like, look what it already can do. Like, mm. guys, are you paying attention? Because they now had an example that could speak to the imagination. And then there were a lot of people outside of AI who were like, oh, wow, it can already do this. And look, look what it's doing. In the community for the last two weeks, we were diving into multi-agent systems. You showed how you build a shared presentation. And one thing that both of us, I remember, talked is when businesses should use what? I'm curious, what is your take? What type of businesses, let's say B2B versus B2C, is very huge difference in a sense. At what stage business should consider going from single workflows agentic or multi-agent workflows? It's uh, basically like a stepping stone. Start with workflows, build it out, turn it into agents, and then you can go into multi-agent. Just for clarity, when we're talking about agents, we're talking about models that can use tools, have some autonomy, take actions on their own to get to an end result. So it's not just an input goes into a model, a prompt changes it into five parts, and then those get processed. That's a more of an AI workflow and not really agentic. Agentic is really when a model has some freedom to take action, use tools, external sources to get something done. You see a lot of marketing going on where people say, oh, we've got the newest agents. And usually it's, it's a um, routing it's, workflow, basically. It's a routing workflow, but there's nothing wrong with that. And there's a lot you can achieve. What is your take for which business agentic AI is right now at the stage that it is right now? is better fit. A better fit for smaller scale, but it mm. also really highly depends on what the risk factor is. If a model gets it wrong, how much of an issue is it? Think of a model that can come up with interesting headlines based on news. So let's say an agent that can go out onto the internet, find stuff on Reddit, maybe find some interesting sources and just write articles or write interesting headlines or maybe some trends it can discover. If then a person sees, oh, the model came up with 10 ideas and six of them are bad and four of them are good. That still can be incredibly useful and very time-saving. And there's not really any risk there. Um, yeah. So that's one thing to consider. And that also can be applied for like larger scale companies. Although, yeah, that can still be a bit more of an issue with higher numbers. It's hard to make sure everyone is on track and understand like, hey, AI can make mistakes. Sometimes there are bad suggestions, uh, but there's plenty of low stakes examples where it's not much of an issue to have an AI workflow that might not work 100% optimal all the time. You work with businesses who like to use no code. What is your experience when do a team like operations or marketing can learn and experiment and build prototype? And when is a good time to get somebody like a developer to solidify the project? Certain things that used to be really hard to do have become easier. And I'm not just talking about multi-agent orchestration or tool calling, but also transcriptions. Mm -hmm. Going from audio to text is way easier than it has or ever has been before. Classifying text, like natural language processing, NLP was really hard to do. And you needed thousands of examples to get like a proper data classification. Now you just prompt, you just say, I will input text and I want to have these fields out of it. I want to extract this piece of information. And that's something that can already be very valuable and that can be straightforward workflow. Check if there's a new file in OneDrive. If it's an audio file, toss it into OpenAI for transcription, transcribe it, then toss it into OpenAI again to get some information out of it. It's simple and straightforward. If you have people who are a bit tech savvy, then they could already put that together. So that's one thing you can do yourself and work on, but once you start to go bigger and give the models more autonomy. If you have some software program and you wanted to automatically analyze some bugs and already give a bit of a report summary for developers, you would have to integrate multiple systems. AI make decisions based on what comes in, put some information somewhere, evaluate, do some double checks. If you want to give a model more control, you need to optimize the flow that you're building. You may not directly need a developer, but you need someone who is like well-versed in how do LLMs operate? How can you get it to work more consistently? Also have knowledge like which models are available. You need to bring that together if you want a functional AI agent. Misconception that I want to clear out, just assuming that this involves, let's say, programming, that every developer knows how to work with LLMs, 
is the biggest misconception. These people get so much pressure, but hey, you know how to work with computers, so it's AI. Do you know everything? And it's far from reality because it's also relearning your workflows and ways of working. Yeah. One thing that has changed in the past few months with, for example, MCPs, but also yeah. with NADN and Make.com specifically, NADN and Make.com have introduced agents and they do a really good job and they also allow you to plug in other tools or other scenarios. And I think NADN has done this better than any other no-code platform. They've done a phenomenal job integrating tools and MCPs, which means it's way easier than four months ago to build an agent that can talk to different tools. If someone has built a great MCP, for example, let's just say a Notion MCP server, then that means you can copy that server, plug it into your model, and now your model can suddenly interact with your Notion. But it's just becoming so much easier and faster. And a big part of that is implementation of those platforms, but also just standardization. When I do public speaking, it's usually investors or business owners in the audience. They all want to understand like what's happening, where things are going, especially if you are investing, but also as a business owner, you're probably investing in your tech stack because technology becomes your competitive edge, how it is. It's kind of always been like that, but right now it's so brutal. Should business owners really grasp an understanding of the systems and see it in action? Or they just watch news and that's enough. People should try it themselves. Not everyone needs to build out a multi-agent system, but like just playing with the models that are available, prefer be the best ones if, to get an idea of, hey, what's possible? What can they do? How do they operate? Is I think very important to make sure that you're like keeping track with everything so that you don't get blindsided when the competitor just flies by you. Where people could get started uh, learning building multi-agent systems, but not just like people who want to learn AI automation and then sell AI automations. I'm more curious. Yeah, there is plenty of that. But for somebody who is, okay, I want to integrate that in my business, but I want to know strategy, get assistance to when to use what, any resources you can recommend? Well, first of all, I can recommend the school community, AI oh, yeah. Productivity Up. Obviously, but anything else you personally find useful? There's a few people that I do like. First of all, Andrew Carpathy. He's a great resource for learning about AI. He's got some amazing like two hour long videos that can speed run the learning process. I highly recommend following him. Ethan Mollick is a great, a great name, great person to follow because he's got a really good view of the like, practical side of AI and how to apply it. I think his Substack is called One Useful Thing, which is also a Good recommendation. And other than that, I highly recommend everyone play with this stuff themselves. Not just read and view what others are building, but try and build something. That was my whole learning process has just been building and playing with it. Just trying to figure out like, how does this stuff work and figuring out the challenges along the way. What I hear from the community members that how great it is when it's a group of people from different businesses with their experiences, who is doing what, how we are solving the same problems. I see it so magical. Like the other day when Vicky was sharing what you guys built with Peggy, like real-time voice assistant, and then Neda coming and giving like, oh, this would be great in that case. And then, oh, how can we build this out? Absolutely. 